everybody. I'll just not do anything. Hello, you're watching Armando Hasurungan, biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things like your artworks. And you can also change the settings to HD original for better graphics of this video. Now, this video is going to talk about the thyroid gland. Now, the thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones, which regulates many metabolic processes in our body. The thyroid gland is situated around the throat. If we zoom into this section, we can find the hyoid bone and underneath it is the larynx and this butterfly looking structure is known as the thyroid gland. Now below the thyroid gland is the trachea connecting to the lungs. The blood supply to the gland comes from the aorta which is right beneath it. Blood supply comes from the superior thyroid artery here and also the inferior thyroid artery. The, S, the, F, the esthmus here connects the two lobes of thyroid glands together. And as mentioned, the larynx is above the thyroid gland. Now, if we zoom into the thyroid gland, I'm saying thyroid gland so many times, we can find few cells. Um, and the structure sort of looks like these. Now, the red blood cells are found here, which is obvious because it supplies the thyroid. Um, we also have follicle cells, follicular cells, or principal cells here connected together to uh, forming the lumen called the colloid. Now each of these segments here are referred to as lobules, which consist of 20 to 40 evenly dispersed follicle cells. And it is here, and it is these follicle cells that produces the thyroid hormones. So the follicular cells produces the thyroid hormones. And there are two thyroid hormones, triiodothyronine, or T3, and thyroxine, T4. So two types, triiodothyronine T3 and thyroxine T4. The thyroid also produces calcitonin and other hormones, but we are not looking at we are only looking at these two hormones. And what T3 and T4 do essentially they, is that they increase the metabolic rate amongst many other things. So what helps regulate or stimulate the production of these two hormones? Well, in the endocrine system, the hypothalamus has a major role in stimulating glands. The hypothalamus is situated around the brain. If we zoom into this section here, we can see the hypothalamus and two lobes underneath it, known as the anterior and inferior pituitary glands. And of course, uh, the thyroid gland is situated around the throat. So, the butterfly looking thyroid gland. So what happens is that the hypothalamus secretes thyroid releasing hormone, which causes the anterior pituitary gland to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, then causes the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid, thyroid hormones T3 and T4, which then targets specific types of cells. Now, there's a negative feedback here. Too much production of these hormones, T3 and T4, will inhibit the hypothalamus to secrete more thyroid-releasing hormone, TRH. So how does the thyroid stimulating hormone stimulate thyroid hormone production? Well, if we zoom in here, we see the membrane of the thyroid, and a G-protein coupled receptor, which gets activated once bound to thyroid stimulating hormone. GDP is exchanged for GTP, which increases essentially cellular cyclic AMP levels, which essentially increases the production of thyroid hormones. Now, let's investigate how these hormones are actually synthesized. Just to recap, the thyroid gland has lobules consisting of follicular cells, which form circular looking lobules, a lumen under, called the colloid. Now, if we zoom into um, this particular section here, we will begin to investigate how thyroid hormones are synthesized. So here we have the follicular cells and the colloid inside it, and around surrounding it are blood vessels. There are many cations and anions in the bloodstream, such as sodium, iodide, sodium, iodide, and potassium, amongst many other things. And inside the follicles, the follicular cells, we have, of course, uh, endoplasmic reticulums, 
which synthesizes thyroglobulin. And these thyroglobulin get sent and packaged up by the Golgi apparatus into the colloid. So thyroid goblin precursors are packaged up and then put into the colloid. And thyroid globulin actually is a carbon chain, you can say, consisting of tyrosine, many tyrosine molecules attached to it. And these are what tyrosine looks like, simplified diagram. Now let's go back to the blood vessels here, the bloodstream. So to synthesize thyroid hormones, we need iodide. So what happens here is that there's a transporter known as the sodium and iodine symptomer, which transports a sodium and also pumps up iodide at the same time. So iodide is now in the follicular cells. Now the sodium can go back out when potassium gets pumped in and it's exchanged for sodium. So now that we have iodide in the follicular cells, what happens is the iodide needs to be transported into the colloid because synthesis, the actual synthesis of thyroid hormones, occurs in the colloid. So how it does this? There's a transporter called the pendrin, which transports iodide, which is a negatively charged uh, chemical molecule, in. At the same time, it exchanges it for uh, chlor chlorine. So now iodide is in the colloid. And there's a special enzyme in the colloid known as peroxidase, which essentially oxidizes, which actually oxidizes iodide to iodine. Now iodine will then bind to the tyrosine rings in the thyroid globulin. And one iod iodine can bind to a tyrosine ring, or two iodines can bind to a tyrosine ring. When there is um, one iodine bound to a tyrosine ring, it's MIT. If there's two iodines binding to a tyrosine ring, it's DIT. MIT stands for monoiodotyrosine, and DIT stands for um, diiodotyrosine. Next, MIT and DIT, or DIT and DIT, can form ester bonds with each other. So basically, making uh, two tyrosines bind together. Um, so if MIT and DIT bind together, we have three iodine molecules, which is called triiodothyronine, or T3. And if DIT and DIT binds, binds together, it will have four iodine molecules, so thyroxine, uh, T4. And as you might have already guessed, there are the, these are our hormones. But the process is not finished yet, because there are still they are still a part. They are still part of the thyroid globulin. So MIT, DIT, T3, and T4 can still be part of the thyroid globulin structure. Now, next, what happens is all these molecules will then get packaged up uh, via pinocytosis into the follicular cells. In the follicular cells, there are lysosomes. And the lysosomes will bind together with the endosome containing the thyroid globulin and will essentially release the, th the tyrosine molecules from the whole structure, the thyroid globulin structure, um, which causes, because lysosomes are acidic and so it breaks things apart, which then causes the T3 and T4 to separate. And the MIT and DIT, if present in the endosome, um, it can be deiodinated de or deionized. Um, to to release the tyrosine and um, make and release the iod iodide molecules. And the process can restart again. So back here again, we have the blood vessels. And in these blood vessels, there are special proteins uh, around the thyroid gland known as thyroid binding proteins. Because T3 and T4, the thyroid hormones, are lipid hormones, they cannot travel through the bloodstream by themselves. And so they bind to these thyroid binding proteins, which allows them to be transported around the body to various cells and tissues to initiate its metabolic effects. And so these thyroid binding proteins travels through the bloodstream to various tissues. It should be noted that T4, there is more T4 secreted by the follicular cells, follicular cells than the T3. 
However, T3 is 10 times more active than T4. And so, once they arrive at the target cell, such as the heart or skeletal muscle, T4 is converted to T3, and T3 just stays like T3, because T3 is more active. And these lipid hormones, T3 and T4, can pass through the outer membrane easily because they are lipid hormones, they're lipids. And in the target cell, it can be a heart and skeletal muscle once again, there is a nucleus. So what these lipid hormones actually do is that they enter the nucleus. And in the nucleus, there are two um, receptors that initiate transcription for thyroid hormone responses. And these are the thyroid hormone receptor and the retinoid X receptor, not racer, receptor, sorry. And once T3 and T4 binds to the thyroid hormone receptor, T3 binds to the thyroid hormone receptor, it will initiate gene transcription for various, for mRNA, specific mRNA, that will promote the thyroid hormone response. And so this mRNA will leave the nucleus and then synthesize new proteins, which will promote again the function of thyroid hormones, which is increasing the metabolic rate. And by increasing the metabolic rate can have many uh, effects, depending on what target cell the thyroid hormone uh, binded to. For example, it can promote growth in muscle and skeletal uh, cells. It, in brain cells, promote CNS development. It has various effects on metabolism, increasing metabolism, and also cardiovascular effects on my um, cardiac cells. And it also had, it also the proteins can also increase um, the metabolic rate in many other organ systems. So, for example, in the cardiovascular cells, these protein synthesis will increase metabolic rate by increasing cardiac output, by increasing the heart rate, and by increasing respiration. In the metabolism, it increases metabolism by increasing oxygen consumption in the body, increasing uh, glucose absorption, increasing gluconeogenesis, increasing glycogenolysis, which is the degradation of glycogen, and increasing lip lipolysis, and also increasing protein synthesis, and also the thyroid hormones will increase basal metabolic rate. So that concludes this video for the thyroid hormone and everything and the thyroid hormones and the thyroid gland. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, provide feedback, and subscribe. Thank you very much.